Hello and welcome to Off The Map Live. I am your host, Ben Licata. Today we are joined by Adam Christopher France from Red Tree Gallery out in Ohio. Um, he's a third generation tattooer. Uh, he specializes in bioorganic tattooing and a little bit of tinge of the sci-fi-ness as well. He's going to be joining us soon here at Off The Map for Sci-Fi Week. Um, here he is, Adam France. Hey man. Hey man. How's it going? It's going well. So now you can see me and you and right, it all works out good. Yep, everything's working well. Well, welcome to the show. Uh, I know we tried this before and it kind of fucked up horribly. So uh, we did our best. You it, know, technology. I, I, <laughs> I think it'll be all right now. Good deal. Um, so I read that you're a third generation tattooer. Um, is that is that actually true? Well, yeah, of course. Um, my grandfather was a tattooer, you know, straight out of uh, World War II and just came back to like central Indiana and just tattooed a bunch of people forever out there until he died in 79. So um, was, he was, doing, was he doing like so, traditional? Oh, yeah. Yeah, super traditional, real like uh, just kind of carny, scratchery, kind of crazy shit, you know, but like a bunch of people got tattooed by him, yeah, and there's still like a lot of people I know that are still alive that have showed me tattoos in Indiana that... You know, they're like, oh, this story about your granddad. And, uh, I've never met him, you know, and I was born like a year later. So it was like, hopefully there's a little bit of that dude in there, you know. Well, um, there's got to be, right? Do you have any of, uh, any memorabilia from your granddad's time tattooing? Uh, like a few things from my grandmother, you know, like, mm -hmm. like old photocopy kind of things and stuff that she just wouldn't let me get my hands on yet. But um, she let me take a copy of or take a photo of or something, you know, but. Uh, yeah, a, a few little things, like just trinkets and things. I, I'm sure, like, eventually I'll uh, receive a lot more, you know, but not yet. <laughs> so did your father learn to tattoo from your grandfather? Uh, my dad tattooed just because I think he was like, I want to be a rebel. and I, I, You know, he was just, like, coming up in the 60s and 70s there, and <clears throat> motorcycles and stuff like that really fascinated him, and that whole like easy rider lifestyle and stuff so he got into that stuff pretty heavily and still tattooed just all around the nation just kind of didn't give a shit about us a lot of times you know what i mean so um but when he was around he was tattooing all kinds of people man he was like filling up the garage with just vested biker dudes just wanting to get panthers and all kinds of shit on them. <laughs> do you have any photos of that kind of stuff uh he does i've yeah. got some of that kind of stuff too like he sent me a big picture pack the other day of just like all these like decades of time and different periods of his like ups and downs and all kinds of I don't know. It was it was it was cool to see. Like tables full of guns and cigarettes and drugs and all kinds of stuff, you know, it was just I don't know. My mom was quick to kinda of pull us out of that stuff. She was just like, Whoa, do what I can here and once she kinda of realized that like he was kinda of bringing that element around for a while, like it it kinda of backfired on him really. He went to prison when I was young. Did you so, in in your beginning tattoo life, did you uh, do you have any similarities to that, or did you start differently? Um, well, in '96, a year after he went to prison, I found this box out in his garage that had a bunch of tattoo equipment and all kinds of weird shit in it, and drawings and stuff. And something he had made out of like train set parts and all this stuff that I, somehow he was tattooing people with it all. But um, I put together my own little doodad out of that stuff and tattooed myself and couple friends from the skate park <laughs> all these like kids that were just like you tattoo like your dad you know and, like um some of them were actually like <clears throat> sons of the of some of the people that he had tattooed like these old biker dudes that still lived around the area um so what were, and you, just, were, you, like, were you tattooing the modern equivalent of the panther what were you tattooing on people the first thing i did was uh a top hat with a like a skull wearing a top hat but it had this like cruella de vil cigarette stem yeah. thing that Classic. It took me forever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Single needle, like, do like this big homemade doodad. Ah, it's sad. I'm sorry I'm even telling people about this, really. Like, never do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how many tattooers I talk to that have been tattooing for a long time that have a very similar kind of story, and it's always ended up with, don't do that. Don't, yeah. don't do what I did. Yeah. You know, I think that's like the ultimate disclaimer for anything like that. If you can try to, to, uh, Toss, toss a little bit of logic out there so that you're not ending it with that. <laughs> 
Tattoo artists are power creators, not power administrators. Save time, money, and trees with Tattoo Release Forms app. Your client will photo his ID, enter personal information, information about the tattoo, health information, initial legal clauses, and sign his name. When the client is finished, you can make session notes and choose inks and needles from the most popular brands and configurations. Preview the form, sign it, and hit upload. The form lands on a secure cloud in seconds as a printable PDF. If you're at a convention or without Wi-Fi, TRF will automatically upload the forms next time you're online. Return clients can simply search for themselves, check to make sure all the information is correct, and sign again. Done in seconds. Download Tattoo Release Forms app from the Apple App Store for free and enjoy 25 free forms. Also available in the UK, Canada, and Australia. So, uh, did you go to school for art? Uh, I, I went a little bit to John Heron Institute after graduating from Western High School in Indiana, but uh, short-lived, quickly kind of ran through the gamut of what I could do there and was catching C's for stuff I knew I should have been getting A's on and was just like, I, uh, this isn't art to me, this is like School. curriculum and other things and stuff so i just kind of skipped out went and did my own thing um my, like right around that time was when i like took off the floor i actually come home one night to tattoo a bunch of friends and my mom had thrown away that kit and all the stuff i had been tattooing with and i was like what i have like people coming over to get stuff <laughs> like what are you doing you know like what do you mean you know and she was like you're never gonna find it i threw it away like box from here you know and she's like it's just gone so we just pedaled around like looking for it <laughs> like where did she put it you know and still you know of course never found it i'm glad i didn't uh, wouldn't have <laughs> been been a good thing to tattoo yeah. with me that so did she uh, did she throw it away to because she was thinking you were heading in the direction of what your dad was up to exactly yeah i think her whole like scenario was just like if i can get this you know, material that he's working with away from it and it's just going to kill everything and um you know because of my dad's you know influence and what like tattooing to her and like us kind of was early on you know it was crazy it was like violent drunk beer bottle smashing lots of acdc and fucking zz top and shit just like blaring out of the garage and stuff you know like Till dawn. <laughs> and, well, and now you find yourself you're in a pretty uh, you're in a clean, neat, nice, like professional gallery setting for a tattoo shop. I think you've gone completely the other end of that. How does she feel about it now? Um, um, man, she is super proud of me now. Like, <clears throat> there was a time there where, well, after she threw things away, I took off to Florida and started tattooing just a little like, well, piercing first and then tattooing at other little shops once they, once they saw I could draw well and. Um, and, you know, coming back to Indiana and things off and on, you know, to be around her, I started a tattoo shop, um, Atom Bomb Tattoos, or, you know, like, <laughs> nice, after, nice pun. Yeah, yeah, it was, a, it was pretty direct there, I guess, but uh, it was just me, and I eventually had, like, a couple apprentices over time and stuff, but, you know, only one, I think, really went on to do much, um, and, you know, it was just, like, cool for her to be local and still see that I was kind of, like, you know, pulling a good crowd around there and kind of changing the way like tattooing was like looked at in Kokomo and like I don't know. It was it was good for her. Like she she actually got tattooed by me actually. My dad had done a little like thumbnail heart on her butt and her <laughs> uh, her new husband hated looking at it. So that's a butterfly now. <laughs> so you tattooed your own mother's butt. Yep. Wow. Well that's good. I'm glad she's happy. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm glad they're all happy. For yeah sure. man.
Hey, can you tell me a little bit about what's over your left shoulder there? Um, this? Yeah. Sculpture stuff? Um, <clears throat> just bio stuff, man. I've been trying to like make things I can take pictures of and try to get all these like reference photos and eventually like learn how to do sculptures better over time. <laughs> um, what led you to do bio? And what is bio to you? Um, bio to me is just being able to construct whatever I choose from reference material and ideas that I have in my head from things I've looked at, like plants and animals and other creatures and, you know, space and alien kind of references and things. And just I stir all that into one big bowl and try to make a new thing out of it each time that hasn't been done before, at least by me or by somebody else, you know, directly. So it's a tough thing to try to make new stuff like that all the time, but it's a great reward, you know, when you actually can pull that off. So this is going to try to like somehow help get towards that goal towards, you know, at least understanding like the tangibility of it. Like I can put my hands on that thing. I can put the light anywhere I want. It's not like, just taking a photo or trying to draw something in a 2D realm and giving it a 3D effect, like, I could go the other way, start with 3D and back up and see if I can make something cool for people eventually. So it kind of helps you see what's on uh, the other side, what wraps around. Like, so when you're tattooing, you can kind of envision what the other side looks like, even though it's not a thing that ever really exists in reality. Yeah, yeah, sure. Definitely taking a lot of reference from, like, um, you know, of course, Guy and like his some of his earlier sculptures and things for like the Mind Tree things and stuff like that. And then um, uh, Carson Hill, I was getting tattooed by him a lot, and uh, he builds just crazy sculptures all the time. I don't think he even posts half of them. And um, I was you know just getting tattooed there and looking at some of the stuff he's been working on. I was like, "What's that clay? What's that stuff? Like, what's this? You know?" And he's just like, "Oh, that's this. That's that. That's this. You know?" And I'm like, I'm "Like, I'm buying all that when I get back." <laughs> Do you think it's important to be tattooed by people that you look up to so that you can kind of uh, learn their way and kind of absorb that knowledge? Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, there's other ways to do it, you know? I mean, a lot of people teach seminars and all, all these other avenues and aspects of, you know, achieving the knowledge that they've acquired and that they're free to give. Um, but, yeah, I felt the best way recently and really all the whole time I just didn't really know it, you know, uh, is just to pay for their time really you know like go and sit with them and receive you know the tattooing that you're looking to learn how to do if that's what you're after like not a seminar is just going to teach you so much you know unless they're actually like doing it to you and you're the person at the seminar like receiving it for everyone else or whatever like you're only getting half of like the knowledge there really I feel like there's a lot of things that are taught just by like this that like pain observation almost like while your mind is dealing with like ouch you're also like observing this like person that you've idolized or placed on this other level of like artistic ability that has something to teach you and like I don't know the mind works differently then and it just like sucks right up like a sponge. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that. And you know, being tattooed gives you like you're in a level of focus at that point. You know, you are so focused on what and there's nothing else to do except that. So okay. you can absorb, you know. Yeah. What is a webinar? your chance to up your game and improve yourself with new techniques in art, in business, and tattooing. Webinars are streaming professional development seminars taught by the masters of their craft that you can watch in the comfort of your home, your studio, or even on the go on your mobile device. If you have a stable internet connection, you can stream a webinar. Here at Tattoo Now, we continually produce high-quality video presentations from top artists and business people. Our catalog includes hours of education from greats like Guy Aitchison, Bob Tyrell, DJ Betts, Jeff Gogway, Russ Abbott, James Kern, Tommy Helm, Ian McCown, Kelly Doty, Remer Oriana, and more all the time. These professional artists share their years of experience to accelerate your path and help you become more successful. Fill up on high-octane brain fuel now with the Tattoo Now webinar. Do you want to bring your career to the next level? Then webinars from Tattoo Now can help you do that.
So you're going to be coming up here next week? Uh, yeah, I think I'll fly up uh, Sunday. Oh, yeah, right on. So why are you coming up here? Tell us a little bit uh, about what's going on. You guys are having that sci-fi week, man. It's yeah, right. right. Yeah. Um, so you're going to be doing sci-fi tattoos? Pretty much full till Friday, I think. Uh, Josh and I have a possible uh, collaborative if we can land something if somebody wants to snag that up. Um, and I have all kinds of like bio crazy space tattoos and stuff for you know Monday through Thursday. That'll be great. So do you travel often? Uh, I try to. Like once a month I try to book like a thing that kind of keeps me occupied and then the rest of the time I'm back here like in the lab, man, or at Red Tree like working on stuff. The lab, huh? Yeah. What's the lab? Is that where you are now? Yeah. Yeah. There's some other areas. There's like a whole other like corner around the way over here with like frame building and all kinds of crap right now. Uh, I so. must I must say I've you know I've done a lot of Skype interviews. I really like your background. Thanks, man. <laughs> Part all of work out all there that stuff it. everywhere. Yeah. Just load it up, you know. Give the eye something appealing to kind of check out all the time, even if it's not what you're working on. Um, so I heard you've been working on a sketchbook project. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what that all is? Um, yeah, like for the last couple of years I've been like carrying around some pretty gnarly looking sketchbooks and just trying to keep them to myself and work on a bunch of cool like esoteric and metaphysical designs mixing that with like alien and robotic and armor kind of pieces and um, leg and arm kind of explosions and diagrams and all kinds of psychedelic weird cool crazy stuff but um, yeah Rusty that uh, put together the Hell City tattoo documentary uh, has been actually compiling um, the sketchbook here recently for me and helping me kind of get a lot of stuff together and we're trying to put this thing together it's like like bible pages and like with buckles and all these kind of little like uh, ideas you know that are uh, a little bit more different you know just to like kind of make it like a, an appealing kind of wicked looking like dealio but so what, what uh, led you what led you to make a sketchbook what, 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 what led you to put out want to put your artwork out there like that I just have tons and tons and tons of stuff, you know, and I feel like I haven't really showed anybody much of it. And other than maybe like Guy or Derv or Rusty or occasional girlfriend or something, like <laughs> it's just that that no one sees it, you know. And, um, I utilize a lot of it for tattooing, you know, as often as I can, but um, not full pieces of it, you know. I segment like ideas out of things I've sketched and stuff and turn it into like a full leg or something that you wouldn't even know came from that. But um yeah, I just want I don't know. I feel like if people want to hook it up and check them out, you know, I want to make them available to to kind of see where my mind's been at for a while here if they have any curiosities on like how I've been able to create some of the stuff I make lately. What uh, what led you to want to make it different than your standard sketchbook? I mean, you know, a lot of artists have released a sketchbook and it just looks like you know, a sketchbook. Um, yeah. What, why did you want to make it more, uh, more interesting? Um, I think the presentation factor of, like, any book like that and the longevity of how long a book will last, you know. Um, I've got some books on my shelves that I favor, definitely, you know, and some of them have made it two and three hundred years to sit on a shelf right now, and the book is amazing, you know, to this day, except for some of the edges of the pages or something, but the bindings just impeccable and the bracketry and all these things that they've like done just to intensify like the longevity of it and the appearance and presentation and just like kinda like I don't know, the appeal of what you're holding in your hand, you know. So um as opposed to even some earlier books that I have on the same shelf with you know, tattered ears and beat up, you know, just like you know, just manufacturing and things like that for, for what they could get out of it for a cheaper price, you know, and how much I've looked at it. Like, it's just, they've seen the worst for wear, you know. So I want to make something that is just, you know, will we'll stand the test of time and also be a cool thing that people will, uh, you know, want to have in their collection. So do you have a time frame for when you're going to release this? Uh, June 1st, actually, we're looking to have maybe close to 200 copies available. Um, and then from there, we'll, we'll kind of see on, like, another run, possibly, or something like that. But, yeah, 200 by June. Um, <clears throat> Guy Atchison and myself have a t um, collaborative art show coming um, in New York City at uh, Sacred Gallery on July 6th. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah, super cool. So I'm trying to have a few of them available there also to kind of... Um, you know, sign and hand off or do a little sketch in for people, you know, at, on the spot. But Surface and Space 
is the name of the art show that we have coming July 7th. Um, I'll definitely I'm be there. Trying to get a lot of stuff together for that right now, man. That's like <laughs> a lot of gravity, man. Trying to make a bunch of cool art to hang next to that guy's awesome stuff. Yeah, no kidding. Do you have a you got a website, right, that people can find out, you know, keep tab tabs on you? Or is that the best way? Or yeah, all travel dates are at adamchristopherart.com. Um, and you can see everything also through redtreetattoo.com and check out even the other artists available there. Cool. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to have updates about the sketchbook on there sometime. Absolutely, yeah. I'm uh, currently working on uh, drawing the cover art and stuff for it. So on my Instagram, at Adam France, you'll be able to find like all kinds of cool progress if I can remember to make posts. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get an assistant to help you out. Yeah, man. That's 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 been the thing for a while here. I just... Uh, Locating somebody that would be able to handle the same type of stuff that I would do in the manner I would do it is kind of hard sometimes without over instructing. So I'm just yeah, it's tough. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about Red Tree? I know it's uh it's, it's kind of like a private appointment only place, right? Yeah, man. <clears throat> Red Tree's definitely uh you know it's private to the sake of like how you've contacted the artist or whatever. Once you're once you're part of the club, kind of you know it's come and go as you please I feel like a lot of times but um, the initial contact yeah it's 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 a private location you know it's um, you know, just kind of like a relaxed kind of setting I would say like you're, you're there and we give you the focus you know so like as you, as the client for the time that you know you're there to it's like you, you call the shots I guess like we're looking to make it to where like <clears throat> there's a time where you get to be in, in control of the whole scene, you know, like if you want new music, whatever one wants to happen, whatever makes you more relaxed, you know. Um, and we could get that without any distractions, like no other people are popping in unless we've scheduled a consultation that we know about or something like that. There's, they're just receiving, you know, unedited time with us. And it's been so cool to be able to build these big tattoos and know that, like, I'm not having a you know, visually look away from a, a tattoo and lose the kind of the contact and the feeling I was at and the mojo to discuss a price or a new thing with a person that might or might not even be serious right now and all kinds of things, you know. So it's just like, I don't know, like the freedom of that, you know, I occasionally kind of like smile inside too, like, thanks, Derb. <laughs> <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever miss a street shop environment? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's times where I run around and, and do it up, man, you know, like, I love to get a taste of it and, and have a good time there and expel that energy and be a part of those scenes with the artists that do that kind of stuff every day, you know, like, I feed off of that stuff sometimes, man, it's great to, like, see that hunger and, and, and drive and, and, like, the younger kids and the, that crowd that's still all about 10 different handshakes a day and they want to do as many of those as they can, you know, because they're paying a dude, like, 60 40 or something like that or even less sometimes you know like a 50 50 cut and but they're all about it you know and they're all they're still so eager to like handle all these cool smaller tattoos and uh, of course yeah i love traveling and, and going to those types of shops man if they'll have me like that's i'm always into that stuff um, sometimes even over like going to the same town to like a bio artist's bigger studio or something that people would have expected me to be at for the weekend i'm like Nah, I'm gonna be down here, watch call it, you know, like I don't know. It's 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 different, man. Like I feel like that kind of stuff's still like a good thing to like, like pack into the main to the mind. So, are there any uh, younger artists that are working today that you have noticed that have stood out to you that you've been like, damn, they're killing it? Um, Do you pay attention to any uh, you know the new stuff that's coming out? Man, I. I kind of do and I don't like I, I, my affiliation with the internet a lot of times is like oh, look at that thing over there in the distance Ooh, uh, fucking weird I can't do it and then I'm out so um, I, I, a lot of times like I don't give it enough chance I don't think to really like see what I need to probably out of it and like I'm weird about like allowing um, things to influence me visually before I have a chance to make the things I want to make um, out of my own head and to get the best things I need out of that. Sometimes I just kind of like put the fucking clamp down on like the internet, the Instagrams, the Facebook things and just avoid them for a couple weeks and, and create stuff and then peek at things, you know, occasionally like, well, what's Ty making or what's Guy on right now or 
where's Dan making some stuff or something, you know? And then, like, not back out of that stuff for weeks, you know? Like, I, I feel bad because some of the guys at the shop are even like, did you see the post I put up, you know? Like, this and that. Like, just, just tell me about it right now. We're talking about it. <laughs> right. Sorry. It's that. But, yeah. Uh, so, uh, occasionally I seem to miss, like, a lot of probably the younger artists, like, contributions to, the, you know, what, what they're trying to put out there. But... Um, I would say locally, man, I've definitely been following Mike Moses a lot. I do oh, stuff really? and um I don't know what his age is, I guess you said younger, but um uh his art is just super amazing to me, man. It's very versatile and I'm pretty wide ranging and he's a local cat here too that I haven't actually even ever met, but we talk online and stuff occasionally through posts and um yeah, so stuff like that is just kinda like you know. <laughs> The, the the random occurrence, I guess, but yeah, I don't really seek it out. So, right, if someone's looking to get tattooed by you, what's the best way? How do you? What's your what's your system? Uh, just through email, really. Just or I have my text message stuff. You know, a lot of times posted with like new um, projects and stuff where I'm like seeking that online occasionally. <clears throat> I do try to like. I don't know, I work on like 10 or 12 projects all the time and I'm like, oh crap, I could have took a, po a picture of that and put it up and people would have cared and seen progress or something, you know, and then I'm on to like five other things before I can remember that. Um, and so now it's just like occasionally I'll put up like a picture of a tattoo or something, you know, and I'm like, oh yeah, I should put this up and, you know, get it out there. And um, I'll put my cell phone number and things like that on, on posts like that, you know, where I'm just like, hey, you know, not to let people forget, you know, you can still hit me up, but um, I stay pretty pretty full a lot these these days. I'm, I'm I'm feel like I'm pretty lucky to have a good full schedule with the tattoos I'd like to do, and or pretty rad clients that I've been able to kind of like have a meeting with, and you know, just kind of like see what their personalities are like, and see if it's something I really also want to invest forty to sixty hours of my time into, you know, or if like. Uh, maybe you're looking for another person, or we don't really have like a you know, like a mesh of personalities, you know, to where like the time and effort would be like worth the trade off and like psychic vampire kind of stuff or something, you know. And it's like, well, thanks for meeting me, you know. And uh, how, do you, how do you deal with that situation? Is it hard to be like, no, I can't, this isn't working out? Like, um, it's very rare, dude. Like, I'd say like one time a year or something like that, I might have a client where I'm just like. Ooh, uh, you're 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 coming at me kind of differently than what I'm used to, you know, like looking for out of like a first time client or something, you know. So maybe let's uh, redirect you towards a person that I might like have in mind that it would be able to like give you what you're after and like you know kind of juggle all the ideas that they're looking to do. Do you ever have anyone get pissed when, you're, uh, when you won't tattoo them? Yeah, I mean, things like that, you know, like, happen a lot with a lot of other artists I've heard, you know, it's like people, like, kind of having strange attitudes and stuff, you know, like, not really wording their responses right, I think. Um, I feel like I can sometimes say what I want to say, even just on the fly, without, like, hurting people's feelings too much, you know, so, um, I just, it's all about, I think, like, how you, like, present it, you know, and if that's just honesty that you're looking to present just be honest with people and let them know that you know you're not their enemy and you don't hate their idea or anything you know it's just they you know might have selected the person that isn't going to do the best job for them you know and, and list the reasons you know it's just be honest right on hey um i appreciate you joining me today it's been pretty awesome yeah, it's um, awesome i'm glad this uh, all worked out technically and uh, we'll see you for sci-fi week pretty soon Awesome. Yep. Cool. See you in, um, what, seven days or so here. <laughs> All right, man. Cool. cool. See you, Ben. I don't remember. Are how you to talking play. to me? <laughs>
Yeah.